If you're getting ready to write a research article, this video is going to be for you because I'm going to talk about the four mistakes that I have made and I have seen other people make when writing research articles. And before I get started, if you are struggling with where to even get started writing your research article, check out my scientific research paper checklist. It's a free checklist and that will be in the link in the description below. Now, the number one mistake that I see when especially first time writing a research article is not having a story. So whenever you have a, whenever you're writing anything, you really want to have a story. You want to be able to walk someone through your data. It's going to help them remember it better. It's going to make it easier for editors and peer reviewers to get through your paper. And if you have no story, if you just have a collection of facts that you're putting together, it's going to be really hard just to read, especially if you're just kind of spouting out everything that could be relevant. It's, it's, you're almost like writing an encyclopedia. So even if you have a lot of really good research, it may even be hard to figure out the research, to figure out the conclusions of a paper without a good story going through. So before you ever sit down to write, think about, can I sit here and walk someone through exactly what I want them to learn from my research paper. And this is what I often did. Every single time before I wrote a research paper, I would sit down with my advisor, I would have my figures, and I would actually walk them through. This is what we did, this is what we found, that led us to this. This is what we did, this is what we found, that led us to this. And so I would walk them through the story first, just verbally, not writing anything down. And so once you've done that, and if you're really stuck, how do I now transition from this to this? You really need to figure out that transition. And that transition could be either reorganizing your story, reorganizing your facts, or it could be, okay, maybe you needed another experiment. Maybe you needed something to bridge this gap. And so once you have your story and you can walk someone else through it without even writing it down, Sitting down to write it's going to be so much easier because all you're doing is taking what was said verbally, putting it in there, and inserting a bunch of numbers and the actual data that's relevant to that research article. So always start with your story first. And again, if you're having issues with that, you can check out my scientific research paper checklist or even my Write Your Research Article course that kind of walks you step by step through how to create your story. The second major mistake that I see people make when they're writing research articles is they are focused on proving themselves more than communicating their research. And this is really common because, right, we hear most of us when we write our first research article, we're students. We're probably grad students. We may even be undergrad students. And the only thing we've really written up to this point is generally to prove we know something. So we stuff things with all the different facts that we could think someone would be looking for. We stuff things in to prove that we belong, that we know stuff because we're likely going to be graded on it. But that's not what research articles are for. Research articles are co to communicate findings to further along your field. So when you're writing a research article, mentally, you need to put yourself in a place where you are a colleague to everyone who could be reading that research article, whether you're a grad student, whether you're a professor, whether you're a postdoc, it, research scientist, it doesn't matter what you are, you are a colleague in the field that you are writing a research article in. So write the research article you want to read. And trust me, if you've ever read a research article or a draft of a research article where they just throw in every single fact that could be related to that field, you, you stop. Like I've read so many, especially drafts from like other students who just fill it with everything you could need to know about that field. Like it's basically a textbook on the field and they're just trying to input in facts everywhere to prove they know their field. In reality, you need to dwindle it down to what does your reader need to know to understand your research and to communicate that research. That is all that it's about. It's about your reader. It's not about you. It's not about proving yourself to anyone. It's about communicating the results. And by communicating your results, you are essentially proving yourself. By telling people and acting like you are their colleague, you are going to be proving yourself as a mature scientist in that field. The third mistake I see people make, and this is both on efficiency in writing and on mistakes in writing, is manually inputting your references. There's one thing that I could move every single researcher to, it would be a reference manager. 
So some that I suggest, I mainly use Zotero now. I used EndNote in grad school because my professor had an EndNote subscription. If you do not have an EndNote subscription, I don't recommend getting one. Zotero is perfectly fine. And then I actually used Mendeley as an undergrad. So all three of those are really good. I recommend primarily I use Zotero now, though, if you're interested in that, it's completely free to use. In a reference manager, you can literally just input in all of your different papers. I will have my playlist to Zotero linked below, but you can just input in all your different papers. You can even make notes in most reference managers as well. And then all you have to do is simply use their plugin to Word, or if you're using a different kind of Word editor, most of them have several different types of plugins that you can use. And literally it's as simple as just saying insert citation and then clicking the ones you want to insert. What's really nice about this is one, it saves you the time from manually generating your citations and manually generating your bibliography, but also you're going to make changes in your paper. And so I've seen where a lot of people don't cite anything till the very, very end because they don't want to mess up their citations because they're manually doing them. But what I've actually found is people who wait to cite may actually have incorrect information because they didn't find the source first. They just kind of wrote from their head and they have incorrect information that they're gonna need to go back and fix. Being able to use a reference manager allows you to easily be able to input in your references. If you need to change something, it's all dynamic. So there's nothing hard coded into your manuscript. All you have to do is insert in a reference up above if you decide to write a new sentence in and everything will automatically change. Even if it's a like superscript, like a number, it's gonna automatically reset those numbers and reset it in your bibliography as well. The second thing that's really nice about this is it actually also really allows you to easily change your citation style. So if you submitted to one journal, maybe got a rejection and you're ready to submit to a different journal, if you manually input it in your references and they have a different citation style, you now have to manually change every single reference to that new style. And it really sucks when it's in text is different and the bibliography is different. Whereas if you use something like Zotero, you just change your style, it automatically updates and you're ready to submit it off. So now one thing you might need to check is if you're going something like that's parenthetical citations to superscript citations, you may need to move where your punctuation is, but that's a lot simpler than rewriting every single citation that you made. So I would highly recommend using a reference manager instead of manually inputting your references if you are working on a research article. The fourth mistake is reading a lot of papers while trying to write a research article. I see this a lot when people sit down to write a research article is they try and read a lot of papers. And I think this is maybe part of them trying to prove themselves or trying to make sure they have all the information to be able to write their research article. But ultimately, I think it ends up in not as great of a research article. I think you end up with a lot of stuffing of information or even you spend more time reading than you do writing. Once you've gotten to the end of a research project, you should really know most of what you're going to put in your paper. You should have done all kind of your introduction lit review stuff well before. And now you might be reading research articles because you don't know how to write a research article. And if that's the case, I would definitely check out my free YouTube videos down below on how to write your research article. I have several of them. Get my scientific research paper checklist and even check out my Write Your Research Article course that kind of walks you through in more depth with worksheets and everything to help you be able to do that. But you want to more use something that's going to help you cite your sources. So something like that could be the assistant tool by Cite AI, Elicit for looking for very specific information, or even if you have a robust Zotero or Notion where you've organized things, you can search in there to find the research articles you wanna cite for the specific information. You also should have already made your story. So your discussion and all of those points should have been made before you actually sat down to start writing. And I think that's where a lot of people get lost is they're trying to build the story as they're writing the story. Instead of building your story first, building the discussion and all of that, and then writing your story. Whenever you're building your story, you may actually be doing a lot more of investigating papers to look for discussion points. Why did certain things happen? How does this compare and contrast with other literature? But you don't want to be doing that as you're actually trying to write because you're going to be much more likely to end up plagiarizing even accidentally 
because you're looking at a sentence and you just end up typing that sentence because it's what you wanted to say instead of setting that aside and writing from your own perspective and in your own vo voice. So overall, when you're writing, I have my reference manager up, but I don't really have many papers up as I'm writing unless I'm specifically looking for something to cite and I'm just making sure that that paper includes that information in it. Other than that, I'm primarily just writing. And that's why I can write a lot faster than a lot of other people who are spending months writing because they're almost doing as much reading as they are actually writing. So those are the four major mistakes. The first one is not having your story before you write. The second one is writing to prove yourself instead of focusing on communicating your story. Third one is manually inputting in your references. And the fourth one is reading a lot of articles while you're trying to write. Focus on your writing, do your reading, and build your story before you ever try and write. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more tips on how to become a more efficient researcher. And I hope to see you in the next video.